Hi, everybody. Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, my friend, funny dude, comic, sketch performer, all the fun things, Eric Wargo. This is the sound of my voice. Uh, thanks for having me on, Jay. This, this is a good this voice. Is a, oh, thank you. You I, snapped right into the radio voice. Boom. Yeah, no, I, I, I was... I kick myself every day that I'm not actually doing voice acting work. I just think about it, and then that's it. We should get into it, man. I should. I should. I it's... got a, a buddy of mine that's his That's his main profession. Yeah. He was working out of Dallas for a while as a voice actor for Funimation. Oh. So he's doing a lot of anime dubs. Yeah. And then he moved to L.A. He does a bunch of random voices. He just became the voice of Whataburger. What? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Pretty exciting life. Yeah, yeah. That's a gig. It's a good gig. <laughs> oh. I don't know. He, they switched from an old man to a young a young man. It's a good time. I, I always thought Kyle Kinane had, the, had the, the dream gig of being the Comedy Central voice. Oh, yeah. Kyle. And his voice is so perfect for any kind of comedy-related yeah. voiceover work. He doesn't – like it's not until he's out of the booth that it's like, oh, you, you sound drunk. <laughs> but it's like in the booth, it's just bam, you know, like mm-hmm. just just – Pro, he's just a gruff pro. Is he still the voice? They must have moved on from him by now. No, he's still the voice. He's still the voice. Goddamn. Right. I mean, I don't watch enough Comedy Central to be up to date on it. I haven't been up to date either. All the stuff I see on YouTube is just them doing like blips and blorps. Uh huh. But who knows? Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know what else I don't know about this movie? Oh my god. Oh boy. The movie brought to my attention today: uh-huh. War of the Worlds. That's it. Yeah. This is. Have you seen it before? No, I had tried watching it once. It's frustrating. It's it's bad. Every human like decision in this movie frustrates me constantly. Um, I mean, it's the story itself. Even the actual story that it's based on frustrates me. Really, uh, the original H.G. Wells story. Yeah, was- yeah. I think the. I mean, I love what the radio show did. Uh, the Orson Welles like production, right, yeah. like and people freaking out, like that makes me chuckle. I uh, mean, that's a classic. That's a classic. And that was kind of like a precursor to like the Blair Witch kind of like found footage kind of vibe. And it was just blurring the lines between reality and and art. And like, I think that's cool. But the original book never tried to do that. Uh, You know, it's nothing to do with that. This is like, I'll just cut to it. What frustrates me, and I know this is like a story about like imperialism, you know, it's a big analogy for imperialism, basically. Right. Yeah. But what just defeats these aliens is just like, oh, germs. We didn't think we're this scientifically superior race and we just didn't bother to think about like basic biology twas beauty killed the beast beauty beautiful bacteria this is a this is a bad 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 movie and that's the thing it's like it comes from such a classic story Mm -hmm. and i have a lot of problems with the just so there's a lot of uh, i'm just so frustrated it's frustrating watch this movie it is a frustrating like when that that first time that it starts that the one of the tripods starts like blasting up on people it's charging for like Probably about two or three minutes, and everyone's just standing there. Like, right? I would be the one guy in that whole crowd. Like, get the fuck out of here! You, you know, gotta like, freak out about it. Oh my god! Nobody, nobody freaks out effectively. It's no. got okay. So basically, if you haven't seen it, if you missed it, good for you. Yeah. By the way, first of all, if you didn't see this movie and you haven't watched it, just avoid it as long as you it's, can. It's like post nine eleven cinema at its at its worst oh at its peak and yeah. we'll get into that yeah but war of the world's a 2005 american action science fiction film directed by steven spielberg yep written by josh friedman and david kep loosely mm-hmm. based on the 1898 novel of the same name by hg wells stars tom cruise dakota fanning justin chatwin miranda otto and tim robbins with narration by morgan freeman in the film, an American dock worker is forced to look after his children from whom he lives separately as he struggles to protect them and reunite them with their mother when extraterrestrials invade the Earth and devastate cities with towering war machines. Yeah. Holy shit. Like a tripod's not even, not even like an effective method of, of, of traveling, you know? Like, like No. They have these giant spaceships and then all of a sudden it's like, well, we've buried machines under the Earth yeah. that sort of walk on their spindly wobble legs. Uh-huh. And they're out here killing everybody and vaporizing them and turning them into dust. And then it's weird. I, yeah. I'd see, that's the, the – like 
they don't even come from another planet in this movie. They just come out of the earth, right? Like they just Yeah, they say that they're Martians, sort of, but they also are like they've been here for years. Wait, Who knows? They come out of the earth. What's been going on? So like they're like circadian beetles or some shit or Yeah, like, cicadas. <laughs> it's yeah. like seventeen year alien release yes. and all of a sudden, wait a minute, they're come they've come to harvest our organs again. Oh, oh these God. wacky aliens. God, it's so it's I, I get so mad. I read the book in high school too. I was like, it was just, I was angry. I was very angry at this stupid. How did you feel when you saw this? You saw this in theaters. I saw it in theaters, and then I like I won't say I can't say the name of the company, but I work for a, a company that puts movies on airplanes. Essentially, okay. So it's like I watch movies for a living. Gotcha. So I see a lot of bad movies. And they don't frustrate me as well. Like, I just saw what men want, you know, and it's like, okay, this is all for free. I got paid. Right. I literally got paid to watch this, so I'm not going to complain. But War of the Worlds is like in that, yeah, it's just every human decision is frustrating. And then it's actually like maybe like a little behind the scenes on this, I guess. But I, I also had to work on a Spielberg documentary. And they, oh, okay. And so they're going through his whole career. And that's actually interesting. Um, and you kind of get like where he was at in his life. When he made this? When he made all his movies, essentially. But then War of the Worlds is like, it's really about him. Uh, like, he was mad at his dad for like a long time. Okay. Yeah, I got to think his dad was like having like... An artist who's mad at their dad. Oh my God. Get out of town. Breaking news. No Spielberg has way. daddy issues. Uh, yeah, but then he's like shoehorning it into this movie. So like, it's literally his issues with his father, which I can get like... I can get that in, in, when you're working with art, but this is like about imperialism. So, like, what are what are you like? I had no idea that that was a thing, and adding that that adds such another layer of just like, oh, come on, man. Yeah. Because like, I remember there's all these parts where Justin Chatwin, who, by the way, if you're not up to date on your sci-fi, this man goes on to play Goku. What? Oh, I'm like 90 percent sure he played Goku in the Dragon in the Ball, live action live one? action movies. Oh man, yeah. that, that, have if you done that sure, one yet? That's... Make sure. I have this correct. Yep. Yeah, he plays Goku in Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh my god, it's bad. I haven't seen <laughs> Just it. Flashback. I have no desire to see it. No, that 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 feels like going to identify the body of a loved one. Is I feel like <laughs> like I don't I want to go see this Dragon Ball movie. I don't know. But, uh, but this movie yeah. takes place. Uh -huh, yes. And there's so much son and father angst it's going on all over the place. The son is like. They're like th throwing fastballs at each other's faces. Yes. In the yes, first fifteen yes. minutes of the movie, it's super passive aggressive. Yeah. And then the son keeps trying to murder himself and commit suicide by either hanging out with the police or going to hang out with the aliens. Yeah. Or the, or the military, and the dad's like, "Don't kill yourself, you fucking idiot!" And the son's like, "You're a fucking idiot." That's basically yeah. So like, this is when he was like reconnecting with his dad. So, so like he had a lot of anger pent up. Yeah, so this okay. is him like like he's he's the kid oh my in this God. relationship and then Tom Cruise is his dad. Let's <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about some of the 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 big problem that I have with this movie right. which yes. is it's a Spielberg movie and I've covered a few Spielberg movies on the show before. Mm -hmm. And the problem with Spielberg movies is that I'm pretty sure I agree with you on this. Go ahead. He's a great he's a great director. He's obviously a great director. Yes. But he has fallen into the trap of making movies that are totally fine. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I think the shining example is probably AI. It, AI is a perfect example that my go-to right now is Ready Player One. Ooh. Because Ready Player One, it's totally – it's watchable. Yeah. It's recent too. So that's really it's sad. It's just like – it's watchable, but do I want to watch it? Yeah, that's another movie of his I worked on recently too. Like I got all the like, obviously I say worked on it. Like I did have nothing to do with the production. I, like mm -hmm. it's all after the fact. But uh, you made sure you you put in the title at the top that says this has not been modified from its widescreen format. Yeah, I'm basically yeah, I'm that guy. You're that guy. Yeah, that's an important role you play, Eric. It's very stupid, dude. Look. So, well, tell me about because I haven't seen AI okay. in a long time. Right. And I did watch World of Worlds recently, and I, this is also a movie that is like. It's totally fine to a little bit subpar. Yeah, it's just I think when like Spielberg has been uh, his footing was not as firm. I think as you know, in, like Player One, Ready Player One aside, I think more of his recent stuff's been better. Um, but uh, th yeah, this was like around the time of AI. Uh, Minority Report was actually kind of it was kind of nice. I was that, that was sort of a departure for him. Like like it, it's cinematic. It looked more like a. Uh, 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 
Oh my god! It feels kind of David Finchery. My uh, Minority Report does. Yeah, I was going to actually say who directed Glad- Gladiator. It was a Ridley Scott. It felt like a Ridley oh, Scott yeah, kind of sci-fi. Really Scott it's like a too, gritty, yeah. grimy future. Yeah, which doesn't really seem like it's Steven Spielberg's bag. No, but he does a thing where it's like like in the very at the very end of the movie, uh, fairy tale ending. Mm-hmm. You know, so like if you're watching like AI, I mean, it's very much a Kubrick film. Right. Right up until like the last like 10 minutes or so, maybe like five or 10 minutes. And what happens in those last, last well, like minutes? it's, if you haven't seen it. I mean, it's just like, basically it's like a, it's a artificial robot like, boy. Yeah. It's like Pinocchio, but with a robot instead yeah. of a puppet. Right. And he learned, yeah, he learned to love and he can't not love. And it's so fucking heartbreaking because fucking humans are garbage. who can't love this robot and they treat like shit or whatever. And he's trying to find his family and he's at the bottom of like a sunken theme park. And he finds kind of like a basically like a blue fairy that he's been looking for. Like it's basically like a like a Cinderella Pinocchio gotcha. type scenario. It's going to make him a real boy. And he's literally waiting there for thousands of years to the point that aliens show up with all this crazy extra tech, and they just basically fill the hole in his heart with alien love tech uh, at the end. And then it's a happy movie at the end. And it's just these th- these are the sorts of things that like Spielberg was just re- like he. he the end of War of the Worlds, he tries to drive home the, like the sappiest family, like that's exactly I mean, morally to I'm, the point where the son is not dead. Yeah, I, that's like he cut him walking back. Ungrateful in, piece of shit, son. Right, and he's alive. You got to be fucking kidding me! Kill, uh, take a risk, Steven Spielberg. Kill the kill, kill a kid. Kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the kid's supposed to be you, yeah, yeah. kill yourself. Yeah, yeah. This Make is, it happen. I, I want to explore Make what would have happened if I fucking took that Make dark your choice. Make dad pay. I would love to see just a hard R. I mean, he's done hard R, obviously, but like... He hasn't done one in a while, though, right? I, I mean, can't even think of when his last hard R movie was. I mean, Schindler's is pretty... But pretty, that was but, like, that was 20-something yeah. years ago, right? That was, what, 93? Right. Uh, let's think. Yeah, what's a movie where it's like... I mean, if if you hear the word "fuck" in a Steven Spielberg, like, whoa, you know, yeah, it's there's definitely some sort of moral panic that happens. Steven yeah. Spielberg doesn't seem like one who's thrown around any kind of charged language at all. No, fine. <laughs> Think about uh, War Horse. Well, I want to know the fuck, why he made that movie. Oh, I don't know. I immediately it's thought a, it's, of it's well, suppressing if Steven as fuck. Spielberg made Equus. Like Steven Spielberg, I feel like would make a very good movie about a man who wants to have sex with a horse, but he's not going to do that because he's afraid to take artistic risks. He's afraid. That's, Steven Spielberg, I'm calling you out. I'll call fuck Steven a horse. Spielberg out. <laughs> Steven Spielberg, why not fuck a horse? You know right? what? If you were giant horses instead of these tripods. Uh, I think we're going. Crazy. No, I'm that sorry. would be actually that'd be a good movie. You think so? Yeah. That would Giant be horses, interesting. War, war, war of the horse, war horses of the world. There we go. That's the spoon. That's the, they, see, there we. We're making magic. Spielberg. Yeah, see, we're just making it more efficient. You need to combine your movies. Uh, yeah. Steven Spielberg makes totally okay movies, and he should not be. What is the thing? I think one of the one of my favorite Spielberg movies, and one of my favorite all time movies. Sometimes I ask, yeah. Et. Et's great. E.T. is a beautiful movie. What did you think about when he went back? And this was like, I think when like George Lucas was like going back and redoing Star Wars and stuff. But like Spielberg went back and he gave those agents with guns. He gave them walkie talkies. Oh, yeah. To like make it less frightening or like do we even kids even think about that shit? No, of course. No, don't think about that. (laughs) No, but parents do for some reason. And Steven Spielberg has started to cater to the wrong audience. Right. I think Steven Spielberg, for whatever reason, did not grow up with his fan base. No, and then he tried to he tried to he keeps trying to cycle back and play to the to a young generation when he's making these movies over and over and over well, again. He's fucking up with this Netflix thing. Did you re- you read no, that? He's got a Netflix deal. No, no. Oh, he, with the thing about him saying he, that. He, yeah, he, yeah, he he thinks it's bullshit that Netflix even gets to take part. Right, and that Netflix shouldn't be allowed to get Oscars and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, and it's that's I mean. <sighs> I think they should be able to get in there because they're making movies. I mean, it does feel like made for TV, but if they're in theaters, then who gives a shit? You yeah. know, they made it. That's- well, now they're starting to make these bigger epic movies, you know, and yeah. it started out – ostensibly it started out with Bright, but there have been tons since – I mean, Roma was their big – their crazy movie that they are trying to do this year. Right. You know, and that it came very close to winning Best Picture yeah, but the he, Oscars. Which- Spielberg's been snubbed like – or just about everything. <laughs> but that's the, okay. Maybe that. Maybe that's where Steel. Did Schindler's win anything? Yeah, Schindler's yeah, yeah. It totally did. Yeah. Thing. Okay. So he hasn't won anything since then. Well, he's won, and he's been nominated for stuff like Steven Spielberg. I know the Post got nominated here. I'm going to pull up a little a Steven Spielberg action. Yeah. I just don't know how you can expect 
to win an award, but also be so broad. And I know that it's like, well, wouldn't you, if you if everyone likes you, wouldn't they vote for you? But it's like you're not doing anything daring by being broad, you know? Well, okay, so Steven Spielberg gets nominated for a lot of stuff, and he's won a fair like he won Best Picture and Best Director for Schindler's List. He won Best Director for Saving Private Ryan, and everybody knows right. he should have won for Best Picture for that. Yeah, too. yeah, that was great. That was oh, no question. But then he went through a stretch. He didn't get nominated for anything, and then Munich, Letters from Iwo Jima, War Horse, Lincoln, Bridge of Spies, and The Post all come out. All get nominated for either Best Picture or Best Director or both in some cases. Okay, but he's not winning. Right. Right. Okay. So the problem here is that let's look at – let's talk about – the, the the this is sort of like Spielberg's trying to age with his audience a little bit. Yeah. Because he makes movies that are kind of all over the map, but he makes certain – like he makes really good action movies. He makes really good historically based dramas. Yes. Those yeah. are his two modes that he is, that he is essentially – Performance in, in Lincoln way. is aces. For right. Sure. Yeah. But – if you're looking at War of the Worlds, War of the Worlds, I feel like, tries to capture both of those things by doing that whole post-9-11 it, to the point where there's a, a line of dialogue where Dakota Fanning asks if it's the terrorists. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, dude, no, the tagline for the movie is, they're already here. Like, yep. in a post-9-11 world, it's like, fuck, like, you're totally harping on the, those fears. That, guess what? This is the, ta- the Taliban ta- of the aliens. <laughs> yes. The, the Taliban. That's fuck, dude. Giant Taliban. I'm surprised Taliban he didn't network. have a, a building. He didn't. He had a lot of building collapses. How come he didn't have any kind of twin tower sequence in this movie? Dude, missed opportunity. It is a missed opportunity. Yeah, Steven Spielberg. Man, if, if you had actually lean, if he had actually leaned into, I like how I'm talking to him. Like, yeah, he's actually listening no, he's listening. To this episode. Yeah. But if he had made this movie even more explicitly an allegory for terrorism, yeah, can you imagine? how well received this movie would have been in 2005 to make like a movie that is a big bombastic action movie that also is like subtly a commentary on the way people approach terrorism in America and reactions to it. Right. It's like, like, so what you mean, like seeing these giant ass aliens and still thinking, is this terrorists, you know, or what do you mean? Well, that's the problem is that's, they're yelling at it like, <laughs> oh no, they're vaporizing it, humans in the streets. Is this <laughs> terrorism? Yeah. Instead of that, and they all, they all just kind of panic. Like everybody freaks out and starts turning on each other. Oh, right. Yeah. That's the thing. It becomes – There's that fucking one guy who's got to get all creepy on Dakota Fanning. Oh, my god. Yeah. yeah it yeah. gets real apocalyptic real quick. Yeah. Like they get their car taken away from them. Yeah. And then Tom Cruise has a gun out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. And he shoots it into the air and the guy's like, put down the gun. Uh-huh. I'm taking your car. Put down the gun. And the, they have this whole absurd sequence where he's like, I just want to get my daughter out of the car. And the guy's like, put down the gun. And he's like, I just want my daughter. And the guy's like, I'm going to take your – you can take your daughter. You can get your daughter, but I'm taking the car. This car is mine. And then they get into the diner and then immediately the guy with the car gets shot. Right. And the, and the car is gone and they tear the car to pieces like the baby and mother. Right. Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense. You don't need to see – any of this for the the movie to exp- to to expand on the plot, right? We already know you guys are going fucking bananas. Well, and it, it, like, and nothing nothing matters because nothing anyone does defeats them. They're just they're just time kills them. I was right. like, and so all like, did anyone fucking learn anything? Like, you know, they're, they're all this like, did, what did the the, the father son arc? I don't it doesn't feel fucking earned to me. It feels it so doesn't. it's well, shoehorned. They yeah, they don't learn anything. No. Really. It's just we're just like it's so fucking frustrating to me because like I would I just look at, at like what I would do. I'm not trying to say I'd be brave or anything like that. I'd be the first guy fucking running. I'd be the first guy asking the dumb question. Like, you re- you for real with this? You know, mm-hmm. no one seems to act real in this movie. Uh, yeah. Other than like maybe the terrorist stuff, but the terror and that's the thing. But even that feels shoehorned in. Yeah, the daughter yelling and asking if it's terrorist. Fuck, come on! It's clearly not terrorist. I, I still, I, I'm just thinking about horses now shooting lasers. Like horses I, shooting lasers would have been a way more interesting. Two hundred foot horses, just for, yeah, they're, they're not tripods. So sorry about that, but especially because then you have the dichotomy. You got little girls who all love horses, and then all of a sudden to see their favorite thing uh-huh. destroying your hometown. Dakota Fanning's a horse girl. Beyond New Jersey, of course she's a horse girl. Yeah. Her and, her and L. They love watching a good dressage video <laughs> compilation on yes. YouTube and and hunkering down. This is a movie that I uh, – sometimes a question I ask in this podcast, right. is there anything that could be done to make this movie better? And I and even with the like the terrorist angle, if they had leaned in on that, 
I don't even think that that would help that much because then you're then it becomes a Mark Wahlberg movie and then it becomes Patriots Day all over yeah. again, where it's it's just like hey I'm an everyman I know how to stop the terrorists I can do it no and that's not what this movie should be no this movie frankly it should just it should just not exist it shouldn't no it's it's there's <sighs> There's no consequences to anything. It sucks. Like, I mean, I shouldn't say like, yeah, life went back to normal after this, but it, it obviously didn't. But it, there's nothing to be gained from it. There's no like insight into the human condition uh, because no one acts like a fucking human in this movie. Uh, maybe the carjacking and stuff like that. But it's just I don't I don't recognize humanity in this movie much. It's the, the it's such a big problem that this movie. It's like. Oh yeah, okay. Humanity gets stripped away from people as apocalyptic shit happens. Yeah. We already know that. Yes, we already know that that's what's going to happen because we already have a bunch of media that explains that that's what's going to happen. Right. We don't need another take on it. Right. If you're going to do a War of the Worlds interpretation, uh-huh. you've got to make sure, and you're setting it in the modern day, which I didn't even realize at the time that War of the Worlds originally came out before the 1900s. Oh the yeah, turn of the 20th. The century. concept. The concept of uh, 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 space travel was like so crazy back then. Like we were thinking about like w- like hot air balloons still, you know. Well, John uh, Goddard invented. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm, I'm mixing up because I just said the film director, oh. the guy who invent. Hold on, I saw this and I was like, the person who invented. Hold on, yeah, the yeah, person yeah. who invented rockets. Oh, uh, is uh, the person who read? He read War of the Worlds and he was like, "Huh, I bet I could do this." Uh, you're talking about Jack Parsons. <laughs> no, um, was like part of the JPL, or is like his buddy. I'm talking like the literal, like the person who invent who invented the multi stage fu- liquid fuel rocket. Oh, was he like a Nazi scientist from pa- Project Paperclip? Probably. Hold okay. on, I'm pulling this up. Robert Goddard. Robert Goddard. Okay. Yeah, he's a he's a American scientist from Massachusetts. He's the inventor who created the build the first liquid fueled rocket. Yeah. And he did this. In 1926, okay. he did it because he read War of the Worlds, and he was like, huh, I wonder if we could actually do that. Mm. I wonder if we could actually do anything that would do space travel. I would I mean, I would be super interested in I'm, – I'm kind of obsessed with uh, uh, space elevators, if you know that concept at all. No, what's a space elevator? Space elevator is kind of like uh, – you probably do it like around the equator, uh, maybe like uh, the Congo or something like that. But like you have a very tall uh, structure. And it just – you just – you can uh, maybe use like magnets or a pulley – carbon pulley system would probably be a little nuts. But basically you just shoot off on a rail uh, your ship instead of like blasting off with, uh, you know, jet fuel. Okay. It's just basically – it's an elevator that just shoots you off into orbit like so tall and so far that you're able to just take off like as though it was a rocket essentially. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Space elevator. So that way you're not like burning ro- rocket fuel uh, and it's just sort of always there. Uh, you can do it. Uh, you know, it. The thing is, it requires. I'm trying to get. The, I'm not a scientist, so I'm probably the last person. To be, you look like you could be a scientist. I look though. like I could be. I am not. I do not have a scientist brain, but I'm. I still. I'm one of those people that's like. I grew up around hackers and people that are way better at science than me, but I enjoy the fruits of the labor. Put mm-hmm. it that way. It's like, oh yeah, you can program that. Oh, I would love to use that. I gotcha. Um, but like for uh, the structure for a, a, a space elevator, it's like the carbon fibers that are needed are so like expensive to make essentially. And to make one that's like a couple miles tall yeah. is a little nuts. Um, but I would love to see that. Um, as far as let's, you know, yeah. it seems people were making a movie about a space elevator would be more interesting. It's more interesting. This hearing me talk worlds. about it's more interesting it's than war of the world. War of the world. It's, it's just, it's, I'm so, I was so underwhelmed watching this movie. And right. also what do we think about Tom Cruise? I was about to get to this actually. Uh, this is like, yeah, this is peak me not liking Tom Cruise. Uh, when this movie came out, I can't tell where Tom Cruise is supposed to be from in this movie. Uh, oh, like just in America or just, I mean, no, I know in America uh, where he's from because of Wikipedia. Oh, sure. I know he's in, I know he's a Yankee fan who lives in New Jersey. Oh, right. Yes. But like his accents all over the place. Yeah. He's, it's, uh. he's just, he's talking weird. He's not, <laughs> yes. he doesn't act. He's he's just like a frustrating. Pro- You're supposed to like him. Yeah, he's supposed to be the protagonist, uh-huh. and like he cares about his daughter and stuff. With his, uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's just I don't really feel any sort of attachment to him as a character. No, because um, he's playing it. It's almost like he's playing it too cool. It's like between it's like everything he released. I would say between this movie 
and Oblivion. You ever see Oblivion? No, I heard about it. It's not good either. And so that was just like, I, like for me in my mind, those are like the bookends of like fuck Tom Cruise. Like you know, like the Mission Impossible movies were great, but a lot of those were before. I mean, he's good in Tropic Thunder. I like Tropic it Thunder was like, yeah, no, that is a that is an anomaly because he's playing against he's playing extremely against type there. Yeah, that's I, the beauty of that. That was that was great, you know, and like you think he was trying to do it in Austin Powers, but no, this one is the one that really. Uh, as far as like against tight performances, for but sure. that's the real downside is that we have Tom Cruise, who's become this iconic action star, right? And so he played a lot of iconic action star roles. And I forget timing wise, is this in the thick of like the him being a Scientologist? I think it was couch? too, because I remember going to like I remember going to like anonymous protests and shit back then too. It's uh, just like it doesn't make no. sense. You can't. I don't buy what he's doing. And now we've got this whole spinoff of like. The every man who's a hero. That's where you get your Mark Wahlbergs and your and your whoever else. Right. Trying to emulate Tom Cruise. This feels like Tom Cruise doing an imitation of Tom Cruise. Yeah. Uh, and a bad one. This in this movie specifically. Yeah. This is this is definitely the peak of. I I think he just like divorced too. Like or like no no he didn't just divorce but he was. Di- I think this was fresh off the couch jumping scene. Yes. Uh, Fresh off jumping off that Oprah couch. I didn't come back around to him until uh, Day After Tomorrow. Not the Day After Tomorrow. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, forget. Fuck that movie, too. That movie is also Th- That is a terrible bad. movie. I'm sorry. It's, um, oh, God, what is it? They, they couldn't fucking come up with the proper title. They had a marketing. It's like oh, these exosuit military guys. And so, a, um, um, day After, not the Day After Tomorrow. Yeah. It, that's also a that's, really bad movie. That's what too. I was just, yeah. It's, it's one of those Roland Emmerich movies. They tried calling it like... Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow, now, yeah. No, we released and call it Live, Die, Repeat. Yeah, Live, Die, Repeat was the, like, the alternate title, but I remember seeing this and it's like, this was... It started off like, okay, this would be interesting. And then the next suits, I was like, okay, I'm on board. And then they did the Groundhog Day uh, vibe. I was like, oh, fuck, I am on board right. 100%. I, like, I heard it was great. It was great. Um, and, you know, like, I, I, he's he's way more fun to watch in this movie, in that movie, at least. Well, okay, and I think, and this is... You see, him, you see him grow. You actually see him change over time. This is a thing I think speaks to Tom Cruise's ability as an actor, because I don't think Tom Cruise is a bad actor. No. But I think Tom Cruise is really only capable of playing two kinds of characters. Yeah. Tom Cruise... Has to be playing in, and he is in ninety percent of his movies. He's playing a likable character. Yeah, he's playing a hero. He's playing someone who you're on board with. You want to root for. And if he's playing an unlikable character, it's in a way that's so over the top that it is almost cartoonish. Um, like in your Tropic Thunders, Collateral. Did you see Collateral. Yeah, collateral. He's great in that. Yeah. because he's likable, but he's just over the top enough. That you're like, this is a fuck. This guy is terrifying. Yeah, that yeah. He's like, he's so it's 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 flat in a way that adds depth. I would like to see him play more bad guys. To be honest, I think he'd be way more interesting in a in a in an antagonistic role. I could, he's a good antagonist. Yeah, but he's not a good shitty hero. No, he wants to be a hero all the time. I think that's what's really like frustrating about Tom Cruise is that he always wants to be. Like these leading guys that save the day, and, and, and right, you know, and that doesn't even fucking happen. And it makes me wonder. Sorry, I took my off. Turn it back on. It's on again. It, it makes on? me wonder what the choice is about. Hey, whose idea was it to have Tom Cruise be just like kind of a piece of shit, but also the hero of this movie? Right. Was that a Tom Cruise choice? Was that a Steven Spielberg choice? Was that a writing choice? I mean, he's like executive producer and everything he does. So, I mean, I, he's got to be making that choice about him. I, I just don't get it. I man. don't get it. But he, like the, the, the recent Mission Impossible movies are, are fucking rad, though. You've seen those? And no, but I hear they're great. They're great. Like it, it, it eclipses anything uh, – any baggage I have about Tom Cruise going in, you know, like even the Scientology stuff and all that other weird shit. Like, like these movies are so good. And he's, he's even doing his own stunts, which like, I, I mean, that's the thing. I, did you see the mummy? <laughs> no, I, did I had not. to watch that. So that one looked bad. Like Christian just, Spicer talked about that on yeah. this podcast. And that movie is laughably bad, but Tom Cruise is the best part of it. Yeah. Because Tom Cruise is like sort of a charm. He's charming. Okay. And he's a hero. And he has these moments, like, there's a moment at the very beginning of the movie where he's like, 
there's a girl who he hooked up with and yeah. he's like trying to avoid her okay. and it's kind of like romantic comedy level of like campiness and then he locks into being this hero who's like oh man i gotta be the guy now and it's good because he's likable at least yeah but well, he's not likable at first when he's trying to ghost this girl but or he's still likable he's like ah, charming okay. and funny still still charming okay this movie tom cruise misused I don't know who I don't know who he's saying. bland as hell when he's misused. He's, yeah. Exactly, Tom Cruise is just like not interesting in this movie. No, because he is playing. You know what the problem with playing an everyman is? What's that? Is that for the most part, everyday men, everyday people are boring. Yeah, they're fucking boring, mm-hmm. and they're not interesting, and they're kind of shitty, and they don't treat their kids well, and they ha- and they're divorced, and they're not interesting. It sounds like. This should be a slam dunk then for Tom Cruise, who's supposed to be playing all those things in War of the Worlds. But Tom Cruise can't play those roles. Yeah. You know who would have been good for this role? Right. If they had gotten Tim Robbins instead of having him play the creep. Oh, right. Tim Robbins was this dad. Yeah. Ah, that would have been amazing. That would have been great. Uh, Yeah. No, you definitely get some kind of schlubby even. Yeah. Just like John Cusack. Yeah. John Cusack would have been great. John Cusack would have been great in this. That would have been good because, like, it's all just basically running around. It's like Tom Cruise isn't the, like I mean he has seen with the gun, but it's not like he's doing like Matrix action fights and stuff. You know, this is just supposed to be a regular. Even Keanu Reeves would have been good for this. Yeah, I would like that. I think Keanu Reeves would be an excellent choice because Keanu can play that kind. He can play this level. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's just it's just a fucking bummer. That this movie exists. It, it's a lot of uh, a lot of the movies where you watch the characters go through all the stuff, and then the world just is destroyed. Like you ever see Knowing that no. Nicolas Cage movie, where it's like everything they go doesn't fucking matter. The sun just eats the earth in the end. It's like okay, cool. Well, I'm glad I spent money on that. Uh, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Even the climax of this movie doesn't feel satisfying. Like no. I would rather see the world get destroyed. Yeah, I'd rather see some like. What's the what's the a testament where the where it's the everybody dies after a nuclear holocaust? I'd oh. rather see a movie like that that okay. is completely bleak. I'd rather see War of the Worlds end where everybody dies and it's like, well, we got fucked after the War of the Worlds. I would like to see that. Like how how like the aliens are dead. We got all this crazy tech. You know, society's going to rebuild. Maybe borders are redrawn or you know like what I would love to see that. Like how do how does humanity pick up the pieces? After something as brutal as like tripods coming from Mars or from out of the ground or whatever, and like leveling like the population right. the world over, how do we come back from that? Uh, you know, uh, the movie the movie never covered this, but the book World War Z. Like, you ever read that? No. That is the book is fantastic, but it's about like okay, we won the war, and now we're trying to get society back on its feet again, and it's just interesting to see like you know. Like, what system did we have in place before that didn't work, but we couldn't change it because, you know, like, it's tough, it's, it's tough to just change governments, you know, midstream when, like, nothing's, nothing apocalyptic is happening, essentially, right? But if, if everything is just destroyed, you got to start all over. Okay, what worked before? What didn't work? What we have, you know, right, like, yeah. it's a, I think that, that take would be a lot. Of, and now you have, like, tripod technology. You can see, like, cars with, like, tentacles, like, you know, crawling down the road. I don't fucking know. But um, that would be a way more interesting take uh, mm-hmm. for me. I would probably, if I was directing it, I'd probably do it like a frontline documentary or something. Yeah, that'd be fascinating. Fascinating, right? And then just make, get the confessionals, get the get the fucking actual experiences. Like maybe it's like uh, you know, all actors, of course, but get like kind of like that triggered emotional response when like talking about like your grandmother getting lasered in the face or you know. Uh, well, you know what I mean. There's a movie that does this well, I think, especially in that sort of vein where it's where it feels like a documentary, right? Which is District Nine. District Nine's great. District Nine is yeah. an amazing movie, and it takes it takes place. It throws you right in the middle of the action. Yes, it. Do, you don't have to deal with this dumb setup and conclusion. It's like, oh, they we're already working with the aliens. They already we already have them in these weird camps. Yeah, it's already. Thanks for reminding me of that movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. And if you're looking for, if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. Yeah, and the ending is like sweet and heartbreaking at the same time. Yeah, you know, like I really, I really liked that ending. It was just kind of, oh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, man. I, I he's supposed to be doing. He was gonna do an alien movie. Neil Blomkamp. Yep. Now he's doing the... Uh, Is he doing stuff. Robocop? He's doing Oat Studios stuff. What's Oat Studios? He's doing shorts. 
Oh, just making shorts? Yeah, I think he's. I think he's got something coming up. I thought he's supposed to do like a more direct sequel to the original RoboCop. He might be. Which Neil Blomkamp? Yeah, man, he should have directed War. I'd watch a War of the Worlds by Neil Blomkamp. I would watch that too. Yeah, he would be fascinating. Spielberg, quit trying to appease everybody because then you appease nobody, especially these two guys here. His next movie is Greenland. Greenland. I don't know what that is. It better be the name of the next RoboCop movie. I guess we'll find <laughs> out. Well, hey, man. Hey. Listen, Eric, thanks for coming on. And I'm, I, I can't believe that we managed to get f- almost 40 minutes out of this terrible, terrible, terrible movie. movie that you even were worried about talking. I was worried about talking about what well, here's, here's one other thing that fucking pisses me off. It's more of the worlds. They come out of the fucking earth. It's the world. Okay. I don't know. They Maybe. should be flying in. They should be like just hurling in and just like crash like a comet. And then just like immediately, like in the, like in the story, but no, you can't even do that, right? Nope. All right. Fucking Spielberg. Fucking Spielberg. Make a good movie. Quit making these middle of the road ass movies. Ah, um, Where can the listeners find you? Of course, you're you're a very prolific performer of the pack. Oh, theater. thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. You can find me on the tweets at, at Eric Wargo. E R I K W A R G O. Uh, I'm a member of Night Church. We perform at Pack Theater every fourth Sunday uh, at Pack. Yeah, at Pack Theater. Uh, we're kind of a horror-leaning sketch team, although I've never written a horror sketch for the team. I just write whatever the fuck I want, and it's it's go. great. Uh, great team, a lot of great people on there, and uh, yeah, ericwarbo.com for about everything else. Cool. So, yeah, thanks, Jay. Thank you. This you has been great. Happy to have you. You can find me at Diet Jay on Twitter and Instagram, jlightcomedy.com for show dates. If you live in Denver or Austin, I'll be coming to you with Roast Battle. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, in Charlotte and Greenville, South Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina. Those dates are on my website along with some dates for April. Check that out. And if you like the podcast, subscribe, leave a rating, leave a review, all that good stuff. This has been Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. Yeah, not War of the Worlds. Thanks, Jay. Fuck War of the Worlds. Ooh.